The Monica Novi Wireless Patch System is for use in a clinical setting for singleton-term intrapartum patients only. The new Novi Wireless Patch System offers an alternative to ultrasound FHR, TOCO UA, and SPO2 MHR transducers, working with your fetal monitor to enhance the way you monitor your patient. With no cables, no belts, and no repositioning, this simple, leadless peel-and-stick alternative to conventional transducers allows the patient to move freely, go to the bathroom, or take a shower, offering hours of trouble-free monitoring, improving clinical workflow, and patient satisfaction. Training Session 2 – Setting up the Novi Wireless Patch System and Testing if Novi is not in the room, you will need to take one from another L&D room and find a safe place on the cart or on top of the monitor to place it. Before you start, confirm that there are two pods, one in each of the two Novi charging bays, three fetal monitor cables, and a power supply cord. All four should be connected to Novi. You should also bring with you a patch in the silver foil pouch and a roll of skin prep tape if these items are not available in the L&D room. Connect the Y adapter into the monitor. The three interface cables have color-coded plugs. The white plug connects to the TOCO input. The green and gray plugs connect to the maternal ECG and fetal ECG inputs on the Y adapter. Now connect Novi to the AC power outlet. The Novi does not have an on-off switch, so after a few seconds, you will see the Novi start screen. Looking at the start screen, above each of the pods in the charging bays is a battery icon showing the battery status of the pod below. A green battery icon is good, a minimum of 4 hours with up to 11 hours if all green segments are showing. But if it is orange, there will not be enough charge to start a monitoring session. When a pod is fully charged, the blue LED on the pod will be on continuously, and when the pod is charging, the LED will flash slowly. If you remove a pod when the battery icon is orange, it will turn off. The battery icon will disappear from the display and the blue LEDs will turn off. Replace pod. Above the battery icons are three buttons. A wrench icon providing access to the setup menu, a question mark icon to access help, and a button labeled test. Whenever you move Novi to another room and connect it to a monitor, you should run a test to make sure that the cables and connections are working correctly. When you press the test button, you will be asked to zero the UA reference button on the monitor. Confirm that this has been done by pressing the forward arrow button. Novi will now send an FHR, MHR, and UA signal to the fetal monitor. Check that the fetal monitor displays the test values as shown on the Novi display screen. If correct, press the green yes button, returning the Novi back to the start screen. If you do not see the correct FHR, MHR, and UA values, press the red No button and follow the instructions. Training Session 3 – Preparing to Start Monitoring This is the start screen. To begin monitoring, just follow the 1, 2, 3 instructions on the Novi screen. Instruction 1 – Press the UA Reference button on the monitor. Instruction 2 – Place the patch. When you are ready, take the foil pouch and check the expiration date on the front label and confirm that it has not been opened or damaged. If the patch is out of date, the pouch has been opened or is damaged, discard and take a new patch. On the back of the pouch is a set of picture instructions on how to place the patch. Before you start, wash and dry the abdomen where the patch will be placed. This will remove any ultrasound gel or lotion the mom has been using to ensure the electrodes stick down. You can open the patch packet by tearing along the top edge following the pre-cut slits. Remove the patch, discarding all of the packing materials. And then, remove the protective film covering the adhesive pad on the back of the plastic clip. Place the patch firmly down so that the clip is centered on the umbilicus, with the red arrow on the top electrode pointing towards the mom's head. If the mom has a piercing or other problem with the umbilicus or the skin area around the umbilicus where the electrodes will go, just move the clip to avoid the problem. Having placed the patch, both of your hands are now free to prepare the skin under each electrode. It is a quick process, but attention to detail is required. 
Take a two centimeter strip of the 3M skin prep tape. One side is sticky. Use this side to stick the tape to your index finger. Lift up one of the electrodes around the clip. You use the skin prep tape to exfoliate the skin under the center of the electrode. Use firm, short strokes, lifting your finger after each stroke. Make three strokes in one direction over the same area of skin, and then repeat to create a cross pattern. The center of the electrode needs to match up with the center of the cross. Once done, remove the protective film and stick the electrode down firmly, trying to avoid pressing the central gel area of the electrode. Repeat for the remaining electrodes around the clip. Now for the last bottom electrode attached to the long, flexible cable. This electrode center should be placed on the midline 6 cm above the rim of the symphysis pubis. This is the width of 3 or 4 fingers. You may want to consider using gloves anytime the pubic area is being palpated. As with the other electrodes, check where this electrode will be placed, avoiding skin lesions and skin folds. When the mom has a panis, you will need to estimate on the upper surface of the panis, where the rim of the symphysis pubis would be if you could see vertically down. Place the electrode center 6 cm above this location. Once you have confirmed the placement point, remove the electrode backing so you are ready to stick the electrode down. Exfoliate the skin so that the center of the exfoliation cross aligns with this point. Do not lose sight of this point and center the electrode over it, sticking it down firmly, trying to avoid pressing the central gel area of the electrode. Instruction 3. Take a fully charged pod from the charging bay. The Novi display will change to show a countdown and both LEDs on the pod will start to flash alternately. If you do not place the pod in the patch clip or place it back in the charging bay before the countdown has finished, an audio-visual alarm will be triggered asking you to return the pod to the charging bay. A pod can be charged from empty in less than two hours, so there is never a good reason to remove pods from the Novi system. Place the pod in the patch clip with the Monica logo facing you. It is located and held securely in the patch clip by magnets that ensure correct placement. As soon as the pod is located in the patch, the Novi display will change and show the skincare electrode check screen. But if there are no problems, monitoring will commence automatically. Training Session 4 What to do when the skin prep fails You have done the skin prep as directed, and yet the skin electrode check screen is showing that one or more of the electrodes has not passed the skin electrode check, and a red cross or orange O is being displayed. You should not bypass a red cross if it can be avoided, so peel back the problem electrode and wipe the skin dry to remove any excess electrode gel. Any residual gel left on the skin will prevent the electrode from sticking back down securely. Re-exfoliate the skin over the same spot as before, pressing firmly, ensuring that your placement is accurate over the center of the cross. If you are successful, the red cross will turn to a green tick and monitoring will commence. It is a good practice that after re-prepping the skin under any of the electrodes, you use a strip of micropore tape to secure the electrode down, especially if this is going to be a long labor or if the mom is planning to ambulate or take a shower. If on the second attempt, you only manage to reduce the red cross to an orange O, it is always better to achieve a green tick. But if you only have one orange O, you can use the forward arrow button on the Novi screen to bypass the skin electrode check and commence monitoring. At the start, if you have a mixture of both red crosses and orange O's, always start with the red cross electrodes first. Just waiting a few minutes could be enough to take the orange O's to a green tick as the electrode gel is absorbed by the skin. Training Session 5 Monica Trace Identifiers and How Long Before Monitoring Commences As soon as the monitoring screen is displayed on the Novi interface, you will see and hear what looks and sounds like FHR and UA pickup from the fetus and mom. It is not. The Novi interface sends an FHR and UA signal to the monitor that traces an M in the FHR and UA trace to identify the source of the FHR and UA. There will then be a short gap before the true MHR and UA are displayed. The FHR could take a little longer. To help identify a Novi monitoring session during monitoring, every five minutes a spike will appear on the UA trace. The final trace identifier used by Novi is to show when the mom is ambulating. This is done by thickening the UA trace whenever there has been continuous patient movement for 20 seconds or more. This provides context for any trace interpretation. 
Training Session 6 The Monitoring Screen The Novi Interface Monitoring Screen itself is divided into three sections. Pod Information Fetal ECG Signal Quality Battery Life and Serial Number of the Monitoring Pod Help Support Information and Alert Messages User Controls Sound On Off and UA Sensitivity High Low These two controls are only shown during monitoring. Touching the icons will toggle between the two states. Alert message examples include a poor fetal ECG signal. The three green squares will change to one red square and no FHR will be traced. This will be picked up by the fetal monitor as a signal loss alert. Mom is out of range. For the mom to move freely in the room and bathroom, you will need three green squares on the Novi display, indicating a strong fetal ECG signal. The Novi interface also needs to detect a good Bluetooth signal, and moving outside into the hallway may cause the patient out-of-range alert message to be displayed. The FHR and MHR trace data will be lost, and the UA will flatline. You will need to ask the mom to move back into the room if you want to continue tracing. No other action is required. Battery Low A fully charged pod has a battery life of up to 11 hours. When the battery drops to around 60 minutes, the battery low message will be displayed along with an audio alert. This can be silenced by pressing the audio on-off icon. If the pod is not replaced, it will alert again after 15 minutes. Electro Disconnection The pod will know if one or more electrodes have become detached. If it is only one electrode, the Novi display will alert you as to which electrode has become detached. Locate the detached electrode and stick the electrode back down over the same spot and secure with micropore tape. When more than one electrode has become detached, the pod is unable to determine which electrodes are at fault, and you will need to investigate all the electrodes to locate the problem, or you can end the monitoring session and then start again. The skin electrode check screen will then identify the problem electrodes. High UA sensitivity is the default startup condition when monitoring commences and is the correct setting for established labor. In pre-labor, the UA trace can look hypersensitive due to small deflections. Using the low sensitivity setting will decrease the UA amplitude, suppressing unwanted low amplitude UA. But as shown in the diagram, it will also reduce the contraction duration. For this reason, when you select low UA sensitivity, it will automatically switch back to the high setting after 60 minutes. By looking at the UA trace, the Monica identifier spike is reduced in height by 50% when the low UA sensitivity setting is selected. Training Session 7 Displaced Umbilicus When you have a large mom to monitor, the umbilicus can be displaced and may no longer be a good reference point to use when placing the patch clip. The objective is to place the patch clip over the center of the uterus, midway between the fundus and the symphysis pubis. But estimating where the center of the uterus in a large mom is can be difficult. If you can palpate the fundus and can estimate the location of the symphysis pubis, then you can place the patch plastic clip on the midline, midway between the fundus and symphysis pubis. In this patient, the umbilicus is not displaced. Alternately, if you can palpate the iliac crests, then the line touching the tips of the iliac crests and where it intersects in the midline is an alternative approach. Again, in this patient, the umbilicus is not displaced, so no need to make an adjustment. Alternatively, position the patch plastic clip along the midline so that the edge of the top electrode, marked with the red arrow, is placed 10 centimeters or so below the fundus. In this patient, all three methods show that the umbilicus is not displaced significantly. The lower electrode on the flexible tail, as we showed earlier, should be placed on the top of the panis 6 cm above the estimated symphysis pubis location on top of the panis. An alternative is to reposition the electrode lower down on the abdomen, placing it under the panis just below the fold. Training Session 8 Troubleshooting FHR Gaps what to do when the FHR gaps is covered by the FHR gaps troubleshooting guide, which is included in all Novi systems. The main reasons are FHR gaps caused by the mom ambulating. The solution is to get the mom back into bed or use an abdominal binder or maternity belt to support a panis during upright position or ambulation. The mom's position is uncomfortable 
and using a pillow to support the back and head can help, as can asking the mom to lie to the left or right if possible. An electrode has come detached. This will be flagged up by the Novi system and should be corrected. Bypassing a red cross during setup or incorrect electrode placement, especially when the symphysis pubis is difficult to locate. In large moms, you may need to support the abdomen with a pillow or rolled blanket if they are lying on their side and the patch has been shifted away from the center of the uterus. One of the main advantages of the Novi system is that you can plug an ultrasound transducer into US2 or one port of the Coro 259CX and fill short gaps, especially those that can occur towards the end of stage 2 when the mom is pushing. Novi is vulnerable to gaps during pushing in stage 2. Training Session 9 Ending Monitoring when you want to end the monitoring session, either because the baby has delivered, or is about to deliver, or because the pod battery is nearly empty, simply remove the pod from the patch and place it back into the empty charging bay. This will end the monitoring session. If you want to continue monitoring, wait a few seconds for the interface to return to the start screen. Taking the charged pod too soon will result in the pod turning off. It is very important that you always return the pod to the charging bay on the Novi interface, even if you have not had time to clean it. Leaving a pod on the bed or putting it to one side to deal with later may result in losing the pod. The patches are good for around 48 hours of monitoring, so you should tell the mom at the start that there may be some redness or itching under the electrodes so that she is not surprised. This will fade quickly. A severe allergic reaction is possible, although rare, and this is explained in section 16 of the user manual. Training session 10, cleaning. Wipe the Novi interface, Novi pod, and interface cables with a soft, non-abrasive cloth or disposable wipe soaked in aqueous detergent or disinfectant or other solution such as 70% isopropyl alcohol. And then, it is good practice to use sterile or distilled water to remove the cleaning solution residue before drying thoroughly with a sterile soft towel or gauze surgical sponge. 